Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're having a battle in the OU tier versus Cody from the Discord server. And let me tell you, this battle is intense. There's some left-right punches in all that stuff. It is pretty awesome, and that Ursaluna really throws me off guard. It's not your typical set, which is really cool to see. Anyway, go and join the Discord server. It's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now. There is a link in the description down below. And with that being said, let's jump into the team preview. Okay, Cody has brought some power that I'm going to get wrecked here. Azumarill, Garchomp, King Gambit, Moltres, Iron Moth, and the Ursaluna. So, got to be very careful of a lot of the Pokemon on his team. The King Gambit is one that's going to definitely come back um, for them if, if, if it gets the chance. So, uh, I definitely want to keep Weevil around for the King Gambit because Low Kick and all that stuff. Or Ice Spinner if they're Terra Flying. Um, so, I think I lead with the Mushroom. No, because they have two Fire Types they could potentially lead with. I feel like they lead with the Garchomp now. I really feel like they lead with the Garchomp, um, so I'm tempted to lead with the Iron Treads. I think I will try and get the Stealth Rocks up straight away, because Iron Moth and Moltres are both weak to it. I mean, one of the two has probably got Heavy Duty Boots, or if not both of them. So I think Stealth Rocks will still be helpful though, so I'm going to go for that. And the battle begins, so Cody's going to lead off with the Garchomp, as we kind of anticipated. Nice and shiny, got to love it. As we lead off with Elon Tusk over here, we are holding an air balloon, so we do not have to worry at all about an earthquake coming our way. So we could go for a Stealth Rox here, or we could go for an Ice Spinner to get the KO on the Garchomp. I think Stealth Rox is more important, so I'm going to get the Stealth Rox up, because it looks like they don't have a Hazard Clearer, so Stealth Rox being up is going to be great. So there we go. They probably go for their own Stealth Rox here, which is fair enough if they do. Um, I'll just Rapid Spin it away. They go for a Liquidation, so they're a Liquidation Garchomp, which is really cool. They do break our... Um, they break our defenses and our air balloon, which is really unfortunate. Um, but what can you do about that? I think I do go straight for an ice spinner here. Because Elon Musk, Elon Tusk is not doing much else for us other than setting Stealth Rocks up and ice spinning this Garchomp. So let's go for the ice spinner real quick. Get some nice damage off. They do switch out, which is fair enough. And they're going to go into what? That's the real question. Azumarill. Azumarill comes in. Azumarill can easily pick us off. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Um, nice and shiny, so Stealth Rock is going to dig in, we go for an Ice Spinner, we're going to get some nice chip damage off on this Azumarill. Um, as we've got a couple of choices here, we either go ahead and switch out into the Amoongus, and they get a <laughs> and they get a Belly Drum off, or we Earthquake, sacking the Iron Tusk just in case they don't, because if they Belly Drum it's like pretty much all over, you know, it's pretty much all over if they Belly Drum. So let's go for an EQ just in case they Belly Drum, there we go, I think they did Belly Drum because the EQ is going to come through now. And they went for an Ice Spinner, expecting the switch. Still KOs us with a critical hit, though, which is a shame. So Ice Spinner does KO at Elon Tusk, but we got some nice damage off. Prevented them from Belly Drumming if they do, but I don't think they're a Belly Drum set. I'm thinking they're Choice Band. So, if they go, they probably went for the Ice Spinner, expecting the Amoongus, which is fair. So I'm thinking of going uh, Salamence, go for the Earthquake, but they have the Moltres sat right there. Salamence actually goes really hard. If we can get rid of the Moltres, Salamence goes really hard, so... Um, I think I'm going to go into the Hooper right now. Hooper basically has zero switch-ins, um, potentially. So we'll go Hooper real quick. There we go. They probably go into the King Gambit right now. So what I'm going to do is, instead of doing what you thought I was going to do, um, and focus blasting, I'm going to go for the trick, expecting the King Gambit to come in. So we go for the trick. They actually go for an Aqua Jet, which does a lot of damage to us. Um, I end up tricking the Choice Specs onto the Azumarill, which is fair enough. Um, choice, you know, tricking that over the choice specs, and then we're going to get a nice and powerful assault vest. So, um, we actually take special attacks a lot better now, which is great. So they probably go for another Aqua Jet, which is fair enough. I'm going to go for a Psychic just to get the KO, as they do go for another Aqua Jet to get damage off on us, which is fair. We go for a Psychic that's going to easily KO the Azumarill. So, um, us not being choice is probably a good thing, but at the same time, it's like meh. Um, so I, I think if the King Gambit comes in now. I think the best thing to do is to go for a trick again and give it the Assault Vest. But they don't, they go into Garchomp, so Garchomp comes in. Garchomp is a threat. Garchomp is a threat. So it's going to get some Stealth Rock damage, which is great. Um, we're going to go straight into Amoongus right now. Amoongus is physically defensive. We can definitely take any hit this thing wants to throw at us. It probably goes for the um, Le uh, Stealth Rocks, but that's, um, that's, that's fine. So Hooper's going to get out of there. And we're going to go straight into our Amoongus, because why not? Let's see what this Garchomp can do. So they go for an Iron Head. Fair enough. Iron Head comes through. Uh, it's going to do some decent damage. We might have expected us to go in something else there. Uh, like the Sylveon, for example. 
Um, but no, we go into Amoongus, and this way we get a free Spore off. So I'm going to go straight for that Spore real quick. They do go for a layer of Spikes, which is fair enough. Spikes is a good play. Um, I'm looking at their team, and I'm thinking the only thing that's stopping the Salamence from having a Rampage is we need to weaken the Ursaluna a bit. We need to get rid of the Moltres, and we need to get rid of the King Gambit. Or, scratch that, we can get rid of the uh, Moltres, and we can just EQ the King Gambit. Or, scratch that even further, we could potentially uh, outrage a Terra Flying King Gambit. So, let's see how this works for us. So, the, the Guard Chomp's asleep, um, which is great. Um, we could go Sylveon, we could go Weavile. Um, they've got one layer of Spikes up. I'm thinking we go into the Weavile. But that just baits in the Moltres, right? That definitely baits in the Moltres. So I'm thinking we go into Calamity. And, and the reason I want to go into Calamity here is because A, they're going to switch out the Garchomp, which I didn't realize, but you know, it's whatever. They're going to go into the Moltres. Now, that's nice and shiny, nice and pink. I'm going to love it. Um, it's got heavy duty boots, which is to be expected, which is fair. We go into Calamity. So Calamity doesn't mind going down to a Moltres. It's absolutely fine by me. Absolutely fine by me. Um, we can't go for Trick. We have to go for Psychic just in case they don't attack us for whatever reason. Um, I don't think Moltres gets Defog, so we'd have to worry about that. So we outspeed, which is great. We go for a Psychic. I figured we might outspeed because they're normally they're normally bulky. So they go for a Will-O-Wisp on the off chance we switched out potentially. Um, that would have been awkward if Will-O-Wisp missed because we could easily KO them with a Psychic the next turn. Um, so the burn is going to take out Calamity, but Calamity got some good damage off on the Moltres, and that is important because the Moltres needs to go. The Moltres needs to go needs to go so how do we take care of this Moltres now that's the real question we have two physical attackers that can take care of it or we have the um sylveon which can't really do anything to it because hyper voice won't do much damage so i'm thinking weavile i'm thinking salamence or i'm thinking terra water uh, moongus that's an, also an option they probably go for a roost right so if we go into weavile now because our, our, our only way of defeating this Moltres, really, is to whittle it down. But if they go for a Roost here, that's going to be a pain in the bum. So we're going to exert some pressure, which is always nice. Um, we definitely go for an Ice Spinner here. Is Ice, ice Spinner still content with the team? Of course it is. Um, we definitely go for an Ice Spinner here just to get some damage off on the Moltres. If they Roost, then they Roost. And we'll just have to kind of go from there. This Moltres is going to be hard to crack, though. Moltres is a very powerful Pokemon. So we barely get the KO. We barely dodge the KO. They go for a Roost, which is fair enough. Roost is a good play. But we're now in a very good position. So what we can do is we didn't get burned. So we can go for another Ice Spinner for a start. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Because eventually they've got to attack us. They've got to think, okay, we need to attack this. Uh, we need to attack this Weavile. So we get burned, which is unfortunate just can't crack Mol Moltres. Just can't crack the Moltres. So they go for a Will-O-Wisp, which is amazing. Amazingly good. So the fact that they've gone for the Will-O-Wisp means we can now KO this thing with Ice Spinner, which is great. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go straight for the Ice Spinner, KO the Moltres, get out of the way. Moltres was proving to be a bit of a threat there. I think they should have roosted that turn. I think they should have banked on the Flame Body and roosted, which is like, you know, whatever. So let's see how this plays out for us now. We've got a Burned Weavile, but we got rid of the Moltres. So no more Flame Body shenanigans. No more Flame Body shenanigans. So in comes Ursa Luna. Now Ursa Luna is obviously a threat. A very big threat. But I'm pretty sure Low Kick will still do some decent damage. It's very heavy. So I think Low Kick does more pattern, more damage to it. And we could tear a Ghost to get that second one off. But there is a good chance they'll go for a Drain Punch here. Um, so Terra Ghost might not be a bad idea. Terra Ghost to get two Low Kicks off. I think it's worth it, isn't it? I think it's definitely worth it. So let's let's Terra Ghost to get two low kicks off. So there we go. Uh, Weavile's coming through. Even burned Weavile's coming through. Weavile's going to come through for us. So we're going to go ahead and Terra. There we go. Into a nice and powerful Ghost type. If this way, if they go for a Drain Punch to recover their HP from whatever attack damage we do, um, or a Facade, it's not going to work out in their favor. So we go straight for the low kick. Does some decent damage. They go for... What are they going to go for? Headlong Rush. Drain Punch, there we go. So they go for the Drain Punch as expected. Um, and I'm also curious to see if Ice Spinner does more damage. I don't think it does though, because Low Kick, uh, Low Kick's like base 120 when they're heavy like this. So I think I'm going to go for another Low Kick. Uh, Low Kick's power is based on the weight of the opponent, so it's a good move to go for. So they do withdraw the Earth Saluna, which is fantastic. Um, they're going to go into the Volker Robot. <laughs> I like that nickname, that's cool. 
Nice and shiny Iron Moth, gotta love it. Get some Stealth Frog damage, which is great. We go straight for a... Oh, they got a booster energy, which is gonna boost their... Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. Speed, which is bad. So we go for a low kick, which is gonna do diddly squat. There we go. Now, we could keep Weavile around as a switch into the Ursaluna. But I don't think it's gonna matter too much, because we're on Death's Door anyway. We may as well just get some chip damage off on this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go for an Ice Shard. It's the only way we outspeed the, um, uh, the Volcarona bot. So we go for the Ice Shard. It's going to do a bit of chip damage, which is always going to... It could matter, you know. It could matter. So we're going to get hit by this Life Orb. Um, they go for a Fiery Dance. And hopefully we don't see a Special Attack Boost. Because that would be unideal. So they do get a Special Attack Boost. Of course they do. Um, so now they are a massive threat. And I don't think we can take this thing on. Personally. Because we've got a Amoongus, we've got a Sylveon, and we've got a Salamence who's Choice Scarf, yes, but definitely gets outsped here because of the booster energy. So, what's our options? What are our options? I'd say we've not got many options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try Salamence. I think Iron Moth sweeps here. This might be over. We'll go into Salamence real quick. There we go. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. And we just go straight for a Dual Wing Beat, I think. Dual Wing Beat should KO from there. Earthquake will definitely KO, but I'm worried about them going into the likes of the um, King Gambit. No, the King Gambit's fine. I think we go straight for an Earthquake here. So they do withdraw. Interesting. So why withdraw? They could have easily uh, Sludge Bomb there. So they go into Garchomp, which is fair enough. Garchomp's going to come in. Nice and asleep. We love to see it. Get some Stealth Frog damage, which is great. We're going to go for an EQ. It's good that we didn't go for a Dual Wing Beat, otherwise our rough skin damage would be painful. So now we've got a couple of options. Now that the um, booster energy is no longer a thing on Volcarona, we actually might have a chance of winning this. Got to keep Salamence healthy, though. Otherwise, that Sucker Punch from King Gambit is going to hurt. So they haven't Terrored yet. They could easily be Terror Flying King Gambit. I'm going to go straight into Amoongus right now. The reason I'm going straight into Amoongus is because if anything, if Amoongus is taking on anything on the team right now, it's the Garchomp. So we'll go into Amoongus real quick. There we go. And let's see if they wake up. I think they might wake up. They fast asleep, which is great. Fast asleep, which is great. So I'm hoping they only have spikes as well. Hoping they only have spikes. So I'm going to get some leftover recovery on my Amoongus, of course. Every little helps. And we're going to go straight for a foul play. And the reason I'm going for a foul play is because Garchomp has really high attack. And obviously, Foul Play will do more damage. Based, it, it bases its damage based on the attack power of the Pokemon. And Garchomp isn't super heavy, so Grass Knot's really not really doing too much damage. So it's fast asleep, which is great. We go straight for a Foul Play. Does some decent damage. Rough Skin does hurt, which is a shame. Um, and then obviously, Rocky Helmet. So the Rocky Helmet being there makes me think maybe we shouldn't go for Foul Play. So I'm going to attempt to go for a Grass Knot here. Definitely going to attempt to go for a Grass Knot here. Um, so let's go for it. Let's go for it. They do wake up and they're going to go straight for a Iron Head, which is going to do minimal damage. Thanks to our bulk. We do get flinched though, which is unfortunate. We get flinched, which is really unfortunate. So um, at this point, I'm willing to switch Amoongus out. If we fail this Grass Knot, if we get flinched again, I'm going to switch into Sylveon to get the Regenerator boost on Amoongus. And then go from there. They go for an EQ, which is going to do more damage to Amoongus. There we go. We go for a Grass Knot. No flinch though because of the Earthquake. Grass Knot does more damage, but Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet both affect Grass Knot, apparently. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know Grass Knot was affected by Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet. The more you know, I guess. The more you know. So, got a couple of options here. We can go Sylveon. We can go for a nice and powerful Hyper Voice um, or a Calm Mind, potentially. And um, We can't Terra. So Sylveon terroring is not an option. So I, and even if we did terror, but terror poison, the Ursaluna just comes in and slaps us in the face with a headlong rush. So I think we have to go Salamence here. I think we have to go Salamence here. So there we go. Boomander's going to come in. Nice and powerful, nice and shiny. We're going to go straight for that EQ. We do outspeed because we're scarfed. There we go. Get the KO on the Garchomp. There we go. So this battle is becoming closer and closer by the second, which is great you got to love to see it. So there we go. We outspeed. We get a Moxie boost, which is amazing. Now they probably go into King Gambit, right? Or they go into Ursaluna. I'd say Ursaluna. Ursaluna comes in. Ursaluna comes in. It's going to take some Stealth Frog damage. Can Earthquake KO from here? I don't think it can. I think Outrage without the plus one has got more chance of doing that. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to go Sylveon. 
I'm going to have to go Sylveon. And the reason I'm going Sylveon is purely and simply because I'm confident we can take a... It's not a Flame Orb Guts set. That's the thing. It's not a Flame Orb Guts set. We're physically defensive. We're going to get hurt by some spikes. He goes for an Ice Punch. Minimal damage. No Freeze. No Freeze, which is great. So there we go. We're off to a good start. Now, has he got a Headlong Rush? That's the real question. Probably. So do we go straight for a Hyper Voice here? I think we kind of have to. We kind of have to go straight for a Hyper Voice. We could Calm Mind. No, we, we go straight for a Hyper Voice here. We go straight for a Hyper Voice. So they do withdraw. And they're going to go into the nice and powerful Iron Moth. Probably the King Gambit. Interesting. So King Gambit comes in. King Gambit comes in. Supreme Overlord is boosting its attack power. We go for a Hyper Voice. Get some decent chip damage off. And we hope that they are Terra Fairy and not Terra Flying. If they're Terra Fairy, Earthquake will still do some damage. Terra Flying, we kind of have to Outrage. I think we have to Outrage anyway. I think we have to Outrage anyway. So let's go for that Hyper Voice. I'm confident we'll live an Iron Head. At least one. We've got to live at least one. If, that, if we don't outspeed, we might outspeed. King Gambit is not the fastest Pokemon in the world. So we do outspeed, which is great. Carbuncle goes for a Hyper Voice, which is great. They go for an Iron Head. Takes us straight out, which is unfortunate. So down goes Carbuncle. What can you do about that? Salamence is our last hope. Salamence is our last hope. So they are leftovers, which is cool to know. I really hope they're not Terra Fairy. I really hope they're not Terra Fairy. If the Terra Fairy and the Terra here are expecting an outrage of all things, then we're screwed. But I'm confident an outrage will take it out. Or is Earthquake better? No, because I feel like they're going to Terra Flying expecting an Earthquake. Let's go for an Outrage. They do withdraw. They withdraw the King Gambit. And they go into the Volcarona bot. Fair enough. They're trying to get that Supreme Overlord boosted in power. That's what they're trying to do. I, I, I'm, on, I'm on to them. I'm on to them. So we go for an Outrage here. Takes out the Volcarona bot, which is great. We get a Moxie boost, boosting our Outrage's power to even further levels. It all comes down to Salamence, really. Um, if they bring the King Gamma in here, it dies to an Outrage. Ursula Luna comes in. Ursula Luna does not live this Outrage, surely. Surely it doesn't live this Outrage. Surely it doesn't live this Outrage. So um, we're going to go ahead and see a Terra right now. What Terra type are they going to be? Are they going to be Steel? Or are they going to be Fairy? Please don't be Fairy. They are Fairy. Fairy Terra Ursa Luna, ladies and gentlemen. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? Why? Why Terra Fairy of all things? I should have EQ'd. They go for an Ice Punch. That's going to take out Salamence, no problem. And that's going to be the game with three minutes left to spare. So GG Cody, that was a pretty fun game. I enjoyed that. Cool to see Ursa Luna doing something more than just your typical Flame Orb facade set. Um, definitely cool to see that. Really enjoyed that game. It was a nice 2-0 victory for my opponent. So, GG Cody, thank you for the watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.